Welcome back class. We're in Newton's Laws of Motion and we're going to be looking at linear motion today. So motion in one direction. So we are going to have to understand what motion is, a change in position. We're then going to look at speed, which is a, which is a change in displacement, where you are and where you ended up and how fast, how much time elapses during that. We'll then look further look later at acceleration, which is a change in your speed or a change in your velocity. So um, I think you're going to like this. I don't think that it's too hard, and I ask that you uh, just have patience with yourself while you're learning. So we're going to start with the idea that motion is relative. I want you to imagine a person bouncing a basketball up and down. As he's watching or she's watching this basketball, it travels away from their hand, hits the floor, and then returns to their hand, back and forth. A person directly above that ball might not even think that it's moving. It's moving away and coming back and moving away and coming back, but the ball is definitely bouncing up and down. If there's a person uh, watching the basketball, then the ball will go down, hit the floor, and come back up. If you were imagining further that this, man, this uh, person was bouncing a basketball on the back of a truck and the truck was going down the street. So let's say the girls basketball team has just won the championship and the truck in the float is going down the street and all the girls are bouncing their, their basketballs. What's happening is the girl on the truck still sees the ball in motion exactly the same as on the ground. There isn't a difference. The ball goes away from her hand, hits the ground, and comes back up. But if you were to be watching from the side this time on the truck, you could see that the ball would go down and up, just like on the ground. But if you had a different observer on the street that was watching the truck move, not only does the ball go up and down, but the ball goes up and down in a forward direction. So speed is a motion is relative to the observer that is possibly also in motion. So if you were to flip a coin and you're on a bus, will the coin go into the seat behind you or will it drop back down into your hand? So if your hand is moving and the coin is moving, then you might think that it's only a, a linear motion, but it might be more three-dimensional. Now, if we understand the distance covered as something is mo in motion, it's moving, it's going to change position. It starts off here and ends up here. So we're going to look at the idea of position as being where it is and displacement kind of the idea of distance, the displacement is how far is where it ended up from where it started. So I could imagine going one block over on, my, on the floor in my room, but I could go all the way down the hall and around and around the building and come back in and then move over to one block. I covered a lot of distance, but my displacement is only how far did I start and how far did I end. So the displacement is just that, that final position minus my initial position. The speed is defined as that distance, but not really the distance going all the way around the building, but the distance that I traveled from, from where I started to where I ended, that displacement, divided by the time it takes to displace. Okay, so if I have a displacement of, if I just step over, I could take, do one block in a second. But if I actually um, traveled all the way around the building, I could, probably couldn't do it in a second. It, I might be one block over in a minute or an hour, depending on how far my actual distance of traveling was. But the displacement is just that step over. So speed is defined as distance divided by time. So here's an example. A girl runs four meters in two seconds. So the distance is four meters, her time is two seconds, so four meters divided by two seconds is four divided by two, which is two, and then your answer has to be in that, um, that speed or velocity, uh, which is meters over seconds. 
Now, sometimes you want to t talk about the entire time that it took to go, right? So how fast did I move from where I started to where I finished? Um, it could be the average time. So the total distance covered divided by the total in, um, uh, interval. So if I did go around the building, I would take a lot longer speed than if I simply stepped over one block. So the total distance covered, no matter where I went, is really only one, le one block over. The time interval could change depending on how long it takes me to do that, and then my average speed is going to be that total distance divided by my time interval. Here's an example. You drive 200 kilometers in two hours, and your average speed is 100 kilometers per hour. Now you can see that since you have an odometer, you have a speedometer on your car, you know that you could go 100 kilometers an hour, which is about 60 miles an hour. You can go 20, you can be stopped. Uh, you could be stopped at a red light. You could go faster than that. You probably shouldn't. And then, then as you take the entire amount of time divided by the total time, sorry, total amount of distance divided by total time, you have your average speed you know from watching your speedometer that you, you could go faster than the average speed it takes, but you could also go slower. So your instantaneous speed is your speed at any instant. Okay, so you could speed up or slow down, but then if you were to take the entire distance you traveled divided by the top total time that you traveled, that would be your average speed. Your instantaneous speed is at any moment on that trip, what is your speed? We get in now to a different concept, and that's velocity. We know that speed is distance or displacement divided by time. Velocity adds one more element. You have to know what direction you're traveling. So velocity has a direction embedded in it. So a speed could be I'm going 50 miles an hour. A velocity could be I'm going 50 miles an hour east. So I know where I started and when I ended. I have a distance divided by time, that's speed. I can find the magnitude of the speed simply by dividing. My velocity then has to, in, to incorporate into what direction am I going. So for instance, if I just told you, I went 50 miles an hour for one hour, where am I on the map? Well, you wouldn't know because you would know that I'm 50 miles away, but you don't know where I am. But if I said my velocity was 50 miles per hour east, where am I? You could locate me on a map. You could say I'm here, and now I'm here, and this is how fast I went. So it's a vector. A vector has magnitude and direction. We have to have the idea of constant. A constant speed is staying the same speed. It doesn't slow down, it doesn't get, ba uh, get faster. Um, but your velocity, remember, has two parts. It's not just your speed, it's also your direction. So for instance, your velocity would change if you, got, if you went higher or lower speed, but if your direction changes, you're also not constant. So a constant means your velocity is the same speed and the same direction with no uh, acceleration, no deviation, and no curving, no turning. In some ways, we're gonna see later that velocity, if you turn the wheel of your, of your car, you are actually, you have an acceleration. It feels like it, that you're accelerating even if you're going the same speed. The next idea that we're going to uh, touch is acceleration. If your speed changes in a certain amount of time, or if your velocity changes in a certain amount of time, then if it gets faster, it's accelerating. If it gets slower, then it has a negative acceleration that's called decelerating. So an acceleration is actually another math problem. It's not just, remember, velocity was distance divided by time. Acceleration now is velocity divided by time. What is the change in your velocity? Has it gone up? Has it gone down? D uh, subtract those two numbers and then divide by the time that it takes to make the difference. I mentioned just a second ago that if you turn the wheel of your automobile, you are accelerating, all right? So why is that? If you go from 40 to 50, 
everybody can understand that you're accelerating, you're getting faster. But if you stay 40 miles an hour and go around a curve, you're actually accelerating even if you stay 40 miles an hour because that turn, you're changing your direction. That means you've changed your velocity. If your velocity has to have direction in it, that means in order to stay the same velocity, you have to stay the same direction. I think you may have felt this in the car. If you drive, you know that if you're coming into a curve, you have to slow down going into the curve. And then once you're in a curve, you can then accelerate out of the curve. But if you take a curve too fast for the conditions of the road or for the, or for the turn of the, of the curve itself, you will go off the road. Um, if you're in a left-hand turn, you'll usually go off the road to the right. If you're in a right-hand turn, you usually go off the turn to the left. The reason why is because by turning the wheel, you've actually changed the velocity. If you're changing the velocity in a certain amount of time, that's called acceleration. And so you're, you, are, you have this idea, the very touched first idea of circular motion and circular acceleration. So the definition or the equation of acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the time it takes to do it. So here's an example. You're at 40. In five seconds, you're at 45. Okay, so I need to know its change in velocity and then the change in time. So let's see. Your speed is 40, uh, 40 kilometers per hour. Okay, 40 kilometers per hour. So if you go up to 45, you take the final minus the initial. So 45 minus 40 gives you 5 kilometers per hour. That's your change in velocity. However long it took you to do that, it was 5, uh, five kilometers per hour. If you change it in five seconds, then what is your, your acceleration? You start with five kilometers per hour, divide it by five seconds, so five divided by five is one, and so you have one kilometer per hour difference every second. And since we went from 40 to 50, 45, we're actually gaining, or it's a positive acceleration of one kilometer per hour every second. So kilometer per hour, remember, is your speed or your velocity. Per second means in the amount of time it's changing at that rate. Galileo loved marble ramps. Okay, we've got some marble ramps we're going to use. And he saw that the steeper the marble ramp, the closer it was to what eventually everyone's idea is gravity. If it's not running on the ramp, then it's not slowing down by the ramp. It's only being uh, dropped through the air, essentially. Just because that ramp is beside it doesn't mean it's really engaged with it. So the steeper inclines give you faster accelerations. So the fastest ramp would be no ramp at all, and it's dropping straight down, and that will be based on gravity. The acceleration of gravity is based upon the mass of the Earth um, and the mass of whatever it is that's rolling down the hill. So if you ignore air resistance, we can get, we can, um, we can know that the acceleration due to gravity is about 9.81 meters per second squared. That means it's getting faster 10 meters per second every second. So every second that it falls, it's getting 10 meters per second faster. So that's what free fall is. Free fall is there if you ignore uh, the air resistance, which there is air resistance, the only thing that's pulling the ball is gravity. There is no friction from, the, uh, from a track or anything like that because there is no track. And so 9.81 is specifically 9.81 meters per second squared, which is 9.8 meters per second faster every second that is the Earth's acceleration due to gravity. The last idea we're going to look at is free falling and so we need to know what the velocity is at any time. So gravity is a constant. Everywhere on the Earth's surface it's going to be 10 meters per second, 9.81. That means if I know how, how much time that it's fallen, if it's every second it's going to get 10 meters per second, then after one second, I know that it's gone from 10 times 1 is 10. 
After one second, it's 10 meters per second. After two seconds, it's two times 10, so it's 20. After three, it's three times 10, it's 30. So you can guess the velocity, V equals GT, G is gravity. And we could round it to 10, it's 9.81 meters per second squared. But the speed of the ball that's falling is based upon how many seconds that it's falling in a gravity field. And that gravity is 10 times whatever that is. Finally, we're able to, to know that um, gravity times time is velocity. I've changed it to A, just generically. Gravity is an acceleration. There's an acceleration due to gravity, and that acceleration is G. But the generic uh, um, equation is velocity equals AT, acceleration times time. If I know how much something is accelerating times time, then at any place I know how fast it's moving. The last is the distance. I can find out how far something has traveled if I know what the acceleration is and what the time is. Now if I have, say, a car that's accelerating at a certain rate, then it would be A times the number of seconds it's moving twice times, you know, that's squared, divided by two. That will be the total distance that, say, a drag racer car would have gone. If, if A or acceleration is gravity, then your distance of something falling out of an airplane would be one half times g, gravity, 10, times the time squared. And that's how you'll find out the distance. We're gonna play with all of these numbers.